Hello, welcome back to Paralegal Counseling Training. We are looking at uh, 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 court process and litigation. And uh, we, we, we looked at the, how the litigation is done in the criminal jurisdiction. We said that uh, in the criminal jurisdiction, uh, the, it starts from the arrest, uh, the arrest of the suspect and the, uh, the suspect is brought before court then the prosecution who are the players in the uh, in the criminal jurisdiction we said that uh, there must be uh, the the accused there must be the prosecution there must be the jury who is the judge and also they can be uh, a lawyer for the uh, for the accused now uh, we talked about how the case is brought in court and now the prosecution now have started bringing in the witnesses and they are uh, they are bringing in the evidence before court um, uh, to prove that uh, the accused committed a crime now in doing that we 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 said uh, that uh, the 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 prosecution must prove to the court must bring the evidence to the court number one by bringing uh, the witnesses uh, or who are state witnesses uh, who should be able to uh, witness against the accused and the first uh, witness that uh, they are supposed to bring it is the uh, uh, the the complainant that is the first witness and then they have to bring the corroborating witnesses uh, to attest or to uh, uh, to testify about the, uh, the 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 action that they accused uh, had done, which they had uh, they they saw or they witnessed. Then after that has happened, there must be now the arresting officer who should be able to conclude the case by bringing in, by summarizing what the witnesses said and how the. Uh, uh, what uh, happened, why, how it took the process uh, up to the time he arrested the, uh, uh, the accused and how he, uh, he finally uh, saw that it was necessary for this accused to be uh, brought before court and he has to bring in the exhibits uh, or the, the exhibits uh, before court and the evidence before court, uh, telling the court that, uh, uh, concluding that uh, this accused had committed a crime so that is the first stage in the uh, in the court jurisdiction of the uh, criminal offense now uh, the first stage that is where now the court is going to determine which is the jury is going to determine whether the case should be continued or the case should be washed out there is what is called premier facial, whereby now the court must, uh, the, the prosecution must establish the premier facial, which means uh, the, the evidence now has to agree that uh, this, uh, the evidence must show that uh, and convince the court that uh, the accused may have committed a crime. And that is what, uh, uh, what uh, is in the first part of the uh, case. Now today I want us to look at uh, the uh, the other thing now what happens. So we are going to look at uh, what is called cross examination, and in the cross examination we are going to look at uh, how to examine the the witnesses and how to examine the police officer who is the arresting officer uh, in court. So that is what we are going to look at because the first part of the case. The first part of the court session, which is uh, the trial, and uh, where the uh, the prosecution must establish the case and must be able to convince the court the, the court that uh, really a crime uh, had happened by bringing in the evidence through the uh, witnesses and also the exhibits that uh, they they should uh, bring before court. So that is the first stage, and as I said, at this stage the jury or the judge now is going to make a ruling whether the case should continue uh, into defense or the case should be squashed or off which is uh, normally called uh, washout so now, now if the case is squashed off from that then the uh, the accused 
does not need to bring the witnesses and does not need to answer or to uh, to testify. Now, so now we are going to direct now today's cross on the on the uh, cross examination. As I said, the the we as the uh, paralegal counselors, our main duty is to help this uh, client or this uh, uh, accused to be able to examine the uh, the witnesses. And mostly the in Zambia we don't have uh, the 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 accused mostly they stand in court without uh, the lawyers because of uh, the exorbitant uh, charges by lawyers. So the accused is going to stand before court and is going to uh, is the one who is going to cross examine the witnesses and is the one who is going to uh, do the the work of uh, a lawyer on his behalf. So that is uh, on himself. So that is what, uh, with, this is the critical uh, moment and this is the critical issue when it comes to uh, jurisdiction in a court. So the, uh, when the witnesses comes before a court, they begin to testify uh, before court. Uh, the first thing that the accused must be, must do, he must be composed. So you as a paralegal counselor, you should uh, encourage the, the witness uh, to uh, to be composed and you should uh, tell the witness that uh, the court is there to help that person out of uh, the situation. So the, you have to give confidence to the uh, accused that the court is not there to, uh, to judge uh, longly, but it's there to give justice to what transpired and the court is there to hear from this uh, um, uh, accused. So it, the court is a neutral place. So that is uh, the confidence that you should give the, uh, the accused so that uh, they will stand in court uh, in confidence and they'll be able to know that uh, I have got, the, the court is there to hear uh, from me. So that is the first uh, process. Now, the, when the witnesses stand now before court and begin to testify, the, this the accused must be, uh, must hear attentively to what the uh, witnesses are saying. So there must be the listening uh, skills from the uh, uh, from this uh, accused. He has to listen uh, to what the witnesses are testifying. Remember the, wit the, the witnesses they have got their uh, lawyer who is the uh, prosecutor who is going to guide them and give uh, guide them uh, on how well what they are supposed to speak in court and how they should uh, what they should talk about in court. So you should uh, you should bear in mind that they may the 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 prosecution they have got an objective and the objective is to win the case. And they have to uh, ensure that uh, they convince the court that uh, the, uh, this client, uh, your client who is the accused, committed a crime. And remember, you are not going to speak for the client, but uh, you have to help this client uh, speak for himself. You have to coach the client uh, on how to uh, do it, on how to speak uh, before court and be able to uh, cross-examine the, uh, the witnesses that the, uh, the, uh, the prosecution is going to bring. So there are 10 points that has to be remembered when cross-examining uh, the witnesses, especially in the criminal jurisdiction. Uh, the first thing, as I said, uh, the, uh, you have to help your client or you have to help the accused to be ready for the court so he has to be composed he has to uh, be ready for court he has to prepare for court uh, number two uh, do not uh, you have to teach the uh, your client not to answer questions from the person who is being cross-examined now here is uh, this this uh, uh, accused is not the one giving the, the testimony. So he's not supposed to answer any question from the, uh, from, the pe from the witnesses. So it is him to ask the questions. So he should not tolerate uh, the, the answer. But uh, when it comes to when they ask the question, he has to be calm and also to, uh, to point out to the question that uh, he's trying to ask uh, the accused.
or the, 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 the witness. And uh, the, when, he, when asking the question, uh, they must be able to ask the leading questions. When we say the leading questions, the leading questions are the questions that are uh, that contains the answer to the uh, question. For example, you are the police officer, is it? Uh, when the when the which, when the accused uh, was arrested, you interviewed him. And when you interviewed him, he told you that he's, he was not there when that incident happened. So you are asking the leading question so that you may give the picture to the jury what really transpired. So now, uh, in this case, it is the accused that I is asking. So you is going to you teach the, your client to ask, when you arrested me, I told you this and this and this. Is it? And you you did this to me. Is it? So is us is uh, giving the leading question. Then uh, the fourth uh, one is that insert only one fact, one new fact in a question. So when uh, the cross examining don't bring uh, a lot of uh, uh, facts in one sentence go uh, step by step ask the question that is going to bring a fact uh, for example as you are the police officer and you have been uh, for how long have you been uh, a police officer then he's going to answer maybe it's not necessary why what i said how long have you been a police officer? Then you say, have been a police officer for five years. How, how many days should an accused be brought before court? Then the police officer will, will say, uh, no, it depends and what, what, what. I, then he, he asks, uh, what does the constitution of the constitution of Zambia uh, say that a person must be brought before court within 24 hours uh, within 24 hours within 24 hours is that what you did then he's going to answer yes or no or um, whatever so you are you you, you are cross-examining and asking point by point leading the to the conclusion which is objective that you uh what the prosecution is doing or what the the witnesses are saying are not even uh connected to the crime and you did not commit that crime uh, so you you break cross-examination into logical progressions uh, towards specific goal and the goal is uh, that uh, the crime was not uh, committed and uh, you did not commit a crime uh, you take control over the witness so let not the witness control you you have to uh, take control over them because you are the one that is asking question so you have to uh, they should not control you you should uh, control them and uh, when they begin to become emotional or what you should be calm. One has to be calm and wait for them. Then you ask, I, uh, I, I, I was asking, I was asking, how long should one, uh, sh should a person be brought before court? Uh, then uh, you should listen to their answers. And it is from their answers where, again, you should develop another question. Do not break down until the witness answers the question. So uh, if the witness is trying to dodge from the questions, rephrase the question and also insist that the witness must answer the question that you have asked. So you should lead the witness to the conclusion that the testimony is not uh, related to the matter. So whatever the witnesses that they, they bring, 
your your purpose to uh to cross examine is to show the court that what the witnesses are are, are bringing before court has uh, nothing to do with the matter before court and it is uh yeah, the the you as the accused or the accused did not commit uh, a crime and did not do a wrong thing or did not uh, 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 the accusation is uh, not tearing to what really transpired so the last uh, thing is to the is to conclude so as the as you cross-examine, there must be a conclusion to show the court that the incidents that happens and what the, the, the witness has a witness before court is not varied and the court should not take it as uh, something that is uh, uh, true or something that is, that is agreeing with the matter and with the, uh, the charge that is on the um, uh, uh, before court. Uh, me uh, taking the peculiar advantage of their property or money. What are you telling the court? And when, uh, when the transaction was made, there was something that we talked about and we said that uh, I'm going to deliver uh, this service to you. Is it? And the time came uh, when I was about to deliver the services and there was a delay which I told you. Is it true? I'm asking, I told you the, that I, I explained to you why I'm not going to deliver uh, the service at that particular time, isn't it? Now, are you aware that your products or your uh, are on their way, on, on, on where coming? Or oh, I told you that the uh, the products will be delivered uh, uh, the only fifth uh, uh, of November. Did I? Is it true? Now, on thirtieth October, you reported me to the police, isn't it? and I was arrested and your products or your services was not delivered. Is it true? Uh, if I put it to you that uh, I had no intention to take advantage of your money and you, you obstructed me when I was ready to deliver the product, what would you say to the court? So when you look at, at that, you are giving the leading question to your uh, client. Then the other thing that uh, uh, the other critical uh, person that uh, comes in, it is uh, the arresting officer. So the arresting officer who is the detective or uh, the investigating officer, uh, he will be able to come uh, before uh, before court to summarize the uh, the what the witnesses and to produce the evidence before court. So now he is a crucial a critical person that needs to be uh, cross examined. Uh, they, as I said, that uh, you you know the, these uh, police officers will cook up the uh, things because they would want to to cook up the uh, the evidence. So now it is it is your advantage if uh, they do that. 
So the detective or the uh, investigating officer is going to give witness on what, how investigated the matter. So now you, you, uh, the duty of the accused is to destroy the credibility of the witness. So it doesn't matter how long and how experienced this officer is. Um, the first question should uh, ask the uh, police officer is, uh, uh, you are the police officer, isn't it? You will definitely answer, yes. For how long have you been a police officer? Then he's going to answer, yes, uh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, maybe nine years or so what is the duty of the uh, police officers? Or the duty of the police officers is uh, to protect the citizens, is it? Um, and you, you said for, for, you have been a police officer for nine years. How many cases have you investigated for that period? No, that is that of the business. I'm saying that how many cases have you, can you approximate the number of cases that you have investigated? You may say 400 or what? And when you arrested me, I told you I did not steal or I did not uh, beat this person, isn't it? But uh, you, you went ahead and uh, put me in, the, in custard, isn't it? After putting me in the custard while I was complaining of uh, the wounds that I, I was, uh, uh, I, 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 I was, uh, nursing because of the fight that we had with this person. Did I, um, uh, did I tell you about that? We said, uh, no. I requested for the police uh, report or for the medical report. Why did you not give me? You, you answer, uh, no, I, you didn't uh, ask. But you saw, uh, uh, officer, you saw that uh, I had some wounds and I needed medical attention. Was it so? You answer the, uh, that. But why did you give the, uh, the other one uh, who is the the, the the witness the the uh, medical report and refused to give me yet you had to put me in custody so that I may not have opportunity to go to the hospital so the officer is going to answer then you will say you said you are the you have been uh, uh, practicing. Uh, you you have been a police officer for nine years. Do you think what you did was uh, right according to the duties and your uh, your what you have been commissioned as a police officer? So. In, in doing that, you are destroying the credibility of the witness. So immediately when the, uh, what the court would want, would, would want to hear the, uh, that what the witnesses are testifying are not the right uh, things to, uh, to do. So that is basically what is, what your duty is as the, um, uh, I, I, as the uh, accused. So the accused must stand in court and show to the court 
that the witnesses' credibility or the witnesses, what they have testified in court, they are not credible and they are uh, they have been they have cooked up those stories uh, or the stories that they are talking about in court has nothing to do with a case before court. Uh, so today that is uh, where we end and uh, 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 God bless you. Uh, I want to believe that you are becoming uh, uh, great uh, paralegal counselors to help those people that have no access to uh, uh, to uh, lawyers. Thank you so much and God bless you.